new experience with Microsoft Power BI Data Gateway. If you are watching this video, either you are already working on Power BI or you are learning Microsoft Power BI. This video is very important. Microsoft has recently announced the new updates for Microsoft Power BI Data Gateway. In this video, we are going to discuss everything about it. But before going there, we will discuss briefly about Microsoft Power BI Data Gateway. That means what is Microsoft Power BI Data Gateway, what are its different types and what is going to be its structure. So without further ado, let's get started. The very first question comes, what is Microsoft Power BI Data Gateway? Well, whenever you are working on Microsoft Power BI Data Gateway, there are so many times that you need to connect with your on-premise data sources and you need to refresh the data on Microsoft Power BI services. Not only that, for certain Microsoft Cloud services as well, you need to refresh it and for that you are going to need Microsoft Power BI Data Gateway. So it is going to act as a bridge between your data source and Microsoft Power BI services where your data is going to get more secure as well as you would be able to refresh your data on Microsoft Power BI services. That means you are going to get the latest data from your data sources automatically through schedule refresh or you can also do manual refresh on Microsoft Power BI services. If you don't install Microsoft Power BI Data Gateway, then you won't be able to connect with your data source and you won't be able to refresh your data on Microsoft Power BI services. That's why it is very important to use Microsoft Power BI Data Gateway. Furthermore, if we talked about how this data gateway is going to work, well, you can see on your screen, there are different layers which works over here. The very first layer is going to be your on-premise data gateway sources. That means where your data sources are. It can be your flat file, it can be your Excel file, or maybe you are using SQL Server or any other database services on-premise. If you need to get the data from those sources, then you need to use Microsoft Power BI Data Gateway. Not only that, for certain other cloud services as well, for the security of your data and to refresh that data sources on Microsoft Power BI services, you need Microsoft Power BI Data Gateway. That's why on your screen now you can see the last layer or the very first layer from the bottom is your on-premise data sources. Not only that, as I just mentioned, you can also use Microsoft Power BI Data Gateway for certain web sources or maybe certain other cloud services, for example, AWS or any other. Then there's a layer in between your data sources and your destination, which is going to be a Microsoft Power BI Data Gateway. That means it is going to act like a bridge when you have to cross from one side of the river to another side, there should be one bridge so that you can use that bridge to go to your destination. In similar way, if you have published your Microsoft Power BI reports or dashboards into the cloud services, then what you need? You need an interface that can connect with your on-premise data source. Otherwise, there is no connectivity between them. Also, you want that to happen securely. That means your data should be protected and there should be no data leakage as well. This is the reason that Microsoft is releasing Microsoft Power BI Data Gateway updates every month so that you can get all the latest updates and your data is going to be very secure. Now let's move forward. And here we are gonna discuss the type of Microsoft Power BI Data Gateway. There are two types of Microsoft Power BI Data Gateway. That means there's on-premise Power BI Data Gateway, standard mode, and there's another one in the personal mode. Standard mode is also known as enterprise mode. That means in this data gateway, you can add as many as users you want. However, the personal mode one, you can only operate yourself or only for one person. There you cannot add more than one user. That's why whenever you are working into your organization, make sure you only use the standard mode, Power BI Data Gateway. Please do not use the personal mode. Otherwise, you won't be able to add any other user and your colleagues or maybe your bosses they won't be able to work on this one. So always keep in mind, you have to use the enterprise mode or standard mode only. Now it comes how to use Microsoft Power BI Data Gateway. Well, for that basically you have to follow the first step. The very first you have to download and install the standard mode version only. 
Secondly, you have to configure your Microsoft Power BI Data Gateway and also you have to fulfill your firewall and other network requirements. Thirdly, you have to add a gateway admin who can also manage and administer other network requirements. That means what happens whenever you have installed it, there are certain times that your server is gonna get crashed. You need to recover it. There should be a key that you can use it. And also certain times you need to check whether your Power BI Data Gateway is running or not. For all those administrative purposes, you have to add one admin to that Microsoft Power BI Data Gateway. And the last step would be to troubleshoot the gateway in case of any errors. New Data Source and Gateway Management Experience. In this part, I'm gonna take you to my Microsoft Power BI Service Portal. Over there, I'm gonna show you everything that is new on this Power BI Data Gateway Management Portal. So, what are we waiting for? Let's go over there. Right now, as you can see on your screen, I'm on to my Microsoft Power BI Service Portal. Over here, you would see this gearing icon, which is the setting icon, so you just need to click over there. And then there's a third option that is Manage Gateways. You need to click over here. As soon as you are gonna click over here, you are going to come over your Data Gateway Management Portal. That means here you can manage everything regarding your Power BI Data Gateway that you have installed onto your server or onto your machine. Now, once you are onto your Power BI Data Gateway Portal, over here you would see that there is a new feature which is saying Data Preview. That means this feature is in preview. It's not generally available. Please keep this in your mind. Now, there are two options you would find over here. That means your on-premise data gateways and second would be your virtual data gateways. Virtual data gateways we are gonna discuss in our upcoming videos. In this video, we are not gonna discuss about it. So please stay tuned for the next video as well. Over here, I have my all the list of the Power BI data gateways. That means my on-premise data gateways, which are in standard mode. None of them is in personal mode. And if you would like to know more, what you can do, you can just come over here and you would see these three dots. That means go for the more options. And here you would see manage users, remove or settings. So in terms of manage users, when you would click, you can add any user as an admin over here. That means the users who can also manage this Power BI Data Gateway. So in the big enterprises, it always happens. There are always more than one users who are going to manage your Power BI Data Gateway. So in that case, you can come over here. You can type just email address, for example, merida at merida at biconsultingpro.com. So here I can select this and then I can just simply say share. So that's how you can add the new users into your Power BI Data Gateway. Now, I'm not gonna do this. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cancel it. So this is just to show you that how you can edit. Second option over here is settings. So in the settings part, if you would like to change anything, this is completely a new portal, it was not earlier. If you would check my previous video, it was not there at all. So all these are the new features that is still in preview. They are not generally available. So if you are working on Microsoft Power BI and you are connecting with your on-premise data sources or maybe AWS or any other services, then please make sure that you are checking all these features or you are working on them. So all these options are over here. You can check and check according to you. Now this was the part where you can see all your Power BI Data Gateway. Now, what if you have to manage it further? Well, the two options that we saw over here are over here as well. Like you can select on this setting button, manage users, both are same. So either you can use it for all, the, all of them or one by one, it's up to you. Now, what I'm gonna do further, further, let's try this one option. On your right hand side, top corner, you will see tenant administration. That means till now, whatever you were seeing over here, there's no option to add a data source. So if you have to add a data source into your existing Power BI Data Gateway, how you are gonna do that? Well, your answer is over here. So what you have to do, you have to first just switch it off. As soon as you are gonna switch it off, you can now see there are a couple of options are appearing over here. That means all the data sources that I'm using. Here, you would see on-premise data gateway and then virtual network data gateways if I'm using any. Now, on the top, you would see this option new. So if you would like to add a new data source, that's how you can do it. 
For example, I am working on my Microsoft Power BI services and there I have already published a report that is connecting with my SQL server on-premise. Now I would like to add that data source into my Power BI data gateway. Then how I can do that? Well, for that first you have to click on new and here you have to select that data gateway cluster name. So I have two clusters, BCP demo and Azure SQL server. So I'm gonna select this BCP demo over here. Secondly, you have to provide your data source name. In this sense, I'm gonna say just SQL Server. And then third, you have to select the data source type. This is very important where you have to find what kind of data source you are using. Over here, we are gonna use SQL Server and click over here on this drop down arrow. And here you can find different types of sources. So let's find SQL Server, which is over here. As soon as I select SQL Server, it's gonna give you the different options. Over here, first you have to provide your server name then your database name and then you have to provide your authentication type like what kind of authentication method you would like to use whether you want to use basic windows or organization authentication that you can provide over here and also if you don't want to test your connection you can skip test connection but i would request you to please always test your connection so that you can make sure whether your data source is getting connected or not then there are also option for single sign-on maybe you don't want to sign in again and again for each and every time so you can use this single sign on option if you would like to know more just click over here and you would get more information about that what is single sign on when you can use it when you cannot use it after this there is also privacy level which privacy level you want to use whether you want to use organizational private public or none so you can select all over there then you have to simply click on this create button and that's all you need to do so this is how you can add a new data source on your Power BI data gateway inside any cluster. I hope this is going to be very helpful whenever you have to do the schedule refresh on your any data set and you are using Microsoft Power BI data gateway. Before ending this video, I would like to highlight one more thing. There is one more option that was not previously available. At least I haven't seen that. Maybe you have but I haven't seen this option and that is to change your region. Now you have the option like where do you want your data set to sit? That means which server Microsoft Power BI should use in order to get your data or to store your data. Over here you would find the different servers and maybe it's because I'm using Microsoft Power BI premium per user license. I'm not sure this feature is available for the Microsoft Power BI Pro users or not. I have to try into my another account and I can only confirm that. If you are already aware about this feature, so please don't forget to put your comment in the comment section. In the next video, we are going to discuss about virtual network data gateway. What is it? What is its structure? How it's going to help you? Everything about it. If you have any question and concerns, please don't forget to comment in the comment section or you can also directly connect with us. If you are new over here, please don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest Power BI updates and videos. See you in the next video.